everyone and welcome to Nora's Cove. I'm Yoshida. Yes, I've been gone for a couple of weeks. Um, probably about two. I've missed maybe, I know I've missed maybe two um, budgets, but I was working on the budget box. So I'm kind of back in the swing of things and I never got around to my monthly November, but it's okay because I'm going to do it and I'm going to uh, mark things off. But we're going to do a little reviewing here. Um, I think the last time was around my mom's birthday. This is the budget that I did. Um, I put down that I was going to make $750. You guys, this week was so good. Um, actually, I made $15.45. In Norris Cove, I made $5. In miscellaneous, $34. Um, I believe that was just helping my co-worker. Um, I did pay Shopify, I think, that week. Everything pretty much got paid. T-Mobile did not. I think I ended up giving them like $68. But other than that, everything else got paid. So this was last week. I went ahead because I realized I was like, I haven't even done my budget. Um, so let me like stay on task. Even though I'm not recording, let me just stay on task. So I guesstimated $1,200 because I knew I had two big ticket items and I came a little under that. I ended up making, almost though, I ended up making $1,170. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I had to get a new car. So I'm debating if I'm going to share the amount here, but I do try to be as transparent as I can, but it is a little higher than what I was paying, but I do want to kind of share it so that way you guys can see how I intend on i um, paying that extra amount that I wasn't used to paying, um, how it'll work into my budget, and all that great stuff. Also, I'm going to start a debt-free journey. I decided I want to be debt-free, um, and I'm tired of going through this rigmarole, this cycle of no money, having savings, and having to use it. I'm tired, and I know that if I really focus, I could get out of debt, and I could stay consistent with my cash envelope. So, uh, miscellaneous ended up being $76.00. Um, so I'm just going to check that because, and the Norse Cove made 35 because we sold our first December box. Um, I've checked off some things that got paid here. So Booth Rent ended up paying 180 because that 76 basically went into that. So really technically I made $1,200. I made almost 14. No, let me get the calculator and shoot that. Don't be assuming and on here lying. So we have 1170 plus and I didn't add that 76 plus and yeah so I did make the 1200 it ended up being 1246 so that was good so I ended up paying 180 in booth rent and car note um this is what I'm putting towards my new car note I have it in my savings um but I'm trying to move it to my Capital One account, which one I don't use. And I think that'll be the account that I'll pay this new car note out of until I can refinance. So we'll talk about all about that car and all that great stuff later. So this week will be the 21st through the 27th. Also, if you are new here, I make these inserts here. You can find them listed below. Um, I also just came out with a budget box. It's a monthly subscription, or you can choose to have a one month box. Just pay for it one time and one time only. Try it out to see if you like it. Okay, let's see. So our sources of income is here. And I'm just putting no code. That's for Norris Cove and miscellaneous. And also, since I have this new car note, um, I'm considering going back to doing nails. So I just going to get paid, trust me. And I kind of have a plan for it. So, and I already have half the car notes. So that kind of tells you what it is. Anyway, so for this week, let me look at my schedule. This is my busy um, week, kind of like my busy Saturday. And um, sometimes on those Saturdays, I can make up to like seven, six hundred dollars And it is a holiday week. So I'm going to step out with 800 just because you just never know. Like I already had someone cancel for Friday. So I'm going to leave it at 800. And I think what I'm going to start doing is something I used to do is make it higher and just make that a goal to like reach. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Norris Cove. So again, I don't know. I don't know who's going to buy boxes this week, but let's just set a goal to do um, at least one box this week. 
because I did put it out kind of late, so it was kind of after people's payday, so that is that. I don't think I'm going to do anything miscellaneous this week, so, so far we have $835. Um, I'm going to put that here. So, and then we'll come back and see what the actual was. So, the bills due this week, um, T-Mobile is normally doing this. Actually, It actually was due today, and I was supposed to pay something. Um, I'll see what my budget looks like, but I'm going to put them last. Um, and on the 25th, we have PayPal. And that is is i believe it's i'm gonna put 40 and then we have to prepare for our car note <laughs> i mean excuse me by car insurance which is due on the 28th which is monday and because i have two cars on there right now the bill is 400 dollars. so <sighs> yeah so let me do this but i do kind of have help with that but I just don't know. I'm just going to put 300 and that's on the 28th. And I'm just going to put 300 plus one of my cars is in the shop. So I need to get that out. Uh, yeah, I got a lot going on, but you know, I'm faithful that God is faithful. So that's all I can say about that. Um, now I didn't see HP come out last week. So I'm going to put that here and that is I'm going to put it on like the 22nd and that's $20 and my booth rent uh, Saturday will be the 26th that is $250 and somehow I got to work in T-Mobile but I'm not going to put them down because I'll probably do another payment plan so I just got to stall them out so I can get ahead like I did last year with my taxes and um, my plan. We're going to talk about money goals and all that great stuff. But um, one of my goals for next year is to be able to have them automatically drafted from a credit card. But I have to pay the credit cards down first. So we have $610 that we need to come up with this week. Now, that's something that I know that I will make, and I have a lunch with my friends this week. Um, me and my daughter had lunch today, but going forward, I'm definitely going to be cutting back on eating out because I know that it's just not working for me, okay? Um, sinking funds, I'm just going to put a total over here of $100. At least that's what I'm going to try to do. And I was going to do sinking funds on Saturday, um, my cash envelopes and all that great stuff. But I was just like, I'm not going to do it because I know I got some other stuff coming up. And I knew I had some bills that would be posting today. So expenses. I'm going to also start at using this because now um, this truck takes premium gas from my other truck to let it. And I'm basically going to be spending almost $100 in gas this week because I went and picked up my mom um, to go to Baltimore on Sunday to the cruise. And then I picked her up again this Sunday. But the gas did kind of last me. And the first time I filled up, I went with half a tank. But I went just random somewhere and spent the $4.49. And it was, half a tank was $53. I was like, uh, no. So I went to Sam's the other day and I filled up my whole tank for $53. So I'm like, that's more like it. So I'm going to have to fill up again because I picked her up. And then like I did some errands today with my daughter and took her to the doctor and stuff like that. So I'm going to put 100 because that will be coming out. Um, I'm going to give myself this eating out. I've already kind of spent out, but out of this money this week, I don't want to spend over $50. So that's like $150. I do need some toiletries. I need to get some paper towels, toilet paper, stuff like that. Um, right now, I'll leave this. And we have $610 and $150. So that's a total of $760. Subtract $800. Remember, I don't really 
take anything. So at least it's for like $40. We got to make more than that. <laughs> so we're left with, um, I'm just putting $40 over here. And I'm going to put my total bills, The budget, what I've budgeted for is six ten, And I'm putting that in the summary here. And for expenses, uh, $150. And normally I do a basic budget, but I realized that I make these for others and, you know, myself as well, but I need to actually utilize the whole thing, the whole thing. Like, why well, design it and I'm not using the whole thing? I like it, I guess because I like it kind of quick and, you know, I just do the necessities. But going forward, your girl is about to break it down because um, I have not had a car note this high in a while and it's feasible and I know... You know, we're talking paycheck to paycheck. But when I'm I'm self-employed, as many of you know, and when I purchase something, how I do it is I take whatever the cost of it is and I divide it by four because I know I get paid on a daily basis, but I know pretty much I'm going to make for a week. And if that will fit into the least amount that I'll make a week. And what I also did was, so when I did the math at the dealership, I'm like, okay, it's feasible, but I already know what I got to take out of my budget, and that's eating out, because that is my biggest spend. I can spend a good two, two fifty, probably sometimes three hundred dollars a week eating out. That I don't be listing here because I already know I'm going to, you know, eat it. But not why not put it in here and stick to the budget, right? So. I was like, okay, I can afford it. I just need to stop eating out. But then when I got home, what I did was I went back to my monthly budgets and I started at the beginning of the year, right? That's why notes are so important to me because it lets me know where maybe some money may have went, what may have changed in my budget. Like if I got something new, like I had COVID. So that would explain like why it's less here. And so January is pretty much kind of slow for us anyway as stylists. And then here you see in February it picked up a little bit. And so I looked at my budget month by month. And what I noticed was that there was a um, decrease in certain months. And those months were like um, June, July. And I don't know how I got to September. Maybe I didn't do August. Let me see. Yeah, I don't know if I got confused or whatever, but I probably didn't do August like I didn't do November. But I knew those were slow months. And then in September, it picked back up, which I knew that it would. So I knew for three months that I would be slow and that my car note would not fit in those three months. So my plan is, one, when I get my taxes, is pay up for three months and then just pay you know, as I normally would. I don't kind of want to sit it aside and have it sitting there because I know myself that I may say, oh, I can just pinch off of it and that way I don't have to have the whole thing. No, I'm just going to go ahead and pay it up for three months. And then when those slow times come, if I don't make one, it's already paid. If that makes any kind of sense. So it's kind of already paid. So that is my plan. And then I want to refinance with my credit union. Right now, it is with another company, but I want to refinance with my credit union, but I want to pay a couple of payments fees first. So maybe once um, I get to March, I may not have to pay up those three. I may can refinance and it may come down to a more reasonable um, price or, you know, a lower interest rate. And the interest rate wasn't too, too bad. I've been offered way higher. So um, I didn't think the interest rate was too bad, but it was higher than what I was getting at the credit union. So um, I'm definitely going to try to get back with the credit union. So yeah, so anytime, I don't know if you're self-employed or not, but that is how I kind of figure out what I can afford. And so then I was like, well, let me look for a job. Let me try to find me a job. Maybe I have to go back to doing the um, Instacart or whatever. And I was like, no, what can I do with them? What I already do to make extra money. And one of the things was I can do weave, but I don't care to do weave. And to be honest, it is just not my lane, but I call it hard time hair. So first of the month you want to weave, I got you. Now I can't do nothing too fancy, but I can give you the basic weave. And even that is a nice price. And that's what I had last week was two weaves. So then I said, Lord, just give me two weaves a month or two weaves a week and that will cover my car note 
Um, so I'm just doing extra things. Some of my people are coming back from COVID. So business has picked up and I now have at least about mm, five new regulars. So that in itself is probably my carnet. So, um, yeah, that's what you do. You got to analyze things and you got to see where you can pull extra money. And then I said, push, come to shove. I will sell stuff, you know, just do what I got to do, but it's going to get paid because I do like my new truck and, um, it's just going to get paid. So that is my rant for today, but I love discussing budgets and how I do my budget as a self-employed hairstylist or just an entrepreneur, period. And um, I just love to share that. And I'm not good at it, but um, I will be one day. <laughs> and I just keep going. No matter what it looks like, I just keep going because I want to be better at um, budgeting. And one day can look back and say, I've come a long way. Y'all, this is pretty much 30 years in the making of me trying to get my budget right. Like I wasn't taught how to budget. I learned, um, I've researched. And so I just want to bring you guys along for the ride. So enough of my rambling, but if you are new here, welcome. Let me know in the comments that you are new here. And if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell so that you're notified um, whenever I upload content and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.